Understanding the definition of the derivative is definitely one of those things that people seem to walk in the first day uh, having different levels of uh, comprehension with. So what I want to do is go over the two different ways that we use it. Um, so the first one, I'm going to put, uh, I have a little curve here. It's a graph of f of x, and then I have a point on it, a comma f of a. That's where I'm interested in finding the derivative, and remember the derivative is a slope at that point. And then I have another point, x comma f of x. So what we do is um, just look at the slope between those two points, just algebra 1 slope. It's going to be uh, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And what I want to do is I want uh, x to approach a, which means that the, um, the two points that are there are actually going to approach each other, or more specifically the x f of x point is going to approach the a f of a point, which makes the slope get closer and closer to the actual value at a, um, and ultimately it will be a. So let's change that. That, uh, the notation we use is f prime of a. So f prime is the derivative, and it's the limit as x approaches a of that slope, um, slope of the secant line. So that's what we have, and I'll do an example here. So make sure you have that memorized. So I want to find f prime of 3 for uh, f of x is x cubed. So it's just definition. f prime of 3 is the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, which is x cubed, minus f of 3, which is going to be 3 cubed, all over, and then x minus 3. Um, so if I try to directly substitute in, I get 3 cubed minus 3 cubed, which is 0 in the numerator, and then 0 in the denominator. 0 over 0, I have to think about limits now. So um, this one I've learned I can algebraically simplify, uh, but maybe I don't remember how to factor x cubed minus 27. So what I'll do here is I'm going to do uh, synthetic division. Uh, so I want to divide x cubed minus 27 by x minus 3. So I put a little 3 in the box, and then it's uh, 1x cubed, 0x squared, 0x, and then minus 27. So bring it down, multiply by 3, add down, multiply by 3, add down, multiply by 3. I get 0, that's good. Um, and then I have this depressed equation, x squared plus 3x plus 9. Um, so that's actually what you get when you divide x cubed minus 27 by x minus 3. So I'm going to rewrite my limit. So really, it's the limit as x approaches 3 of this thing. And then this I can do by substitution, so I get 27. Then I want to rewrite my answer. All right, so that's one example that way. That's where we're getting a value. So our final answer was a value, um, and it's at a particular point. Uh, let's see. The second way of dealing with this is I start with the point x, f of x. Then I have this distance h that I'm going to move. Uh, another way of saying that is delta x. Sometimes people use that. I always use h. Um, and it moves me to a new point along the curve, x plus h comma f of x plus h. So now I have those two points, and it's exactly the same idea, except this time I'm going to get f prime of x, which is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. Okay, so the previous one, it was the limit as x approaches a. Here it's h approaches 0. And then f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x, which obviously cleans up. So f prime of x equals limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that's one, uh, you know, you just, you really have to have that memorized. I mean, the, the derivation is easy enough um, to remember, and it's good because it helps motivate what's going on, but you need to have that memorized so you can use it whenever you need it. Um, so let's do one example here. So we'll find a prime of x where f of x is radical x. So f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So I'm taking x plus h and substituting it into radical x. So that's radical x plus h minus, and then f of x, which is radical x, all over h. Uh, this is one where, from experience, I know to take this limit. I mean, you try to evaluate it at 0. Um, but if h is 0, you end up with 0 over 0. So I'm going to rationalize the numerator. So I have the original again. Do, do, do. Put some parentheses, multiplication. So I'm multiplying by the conjugate on the top and the bottom, uh, which is the same as multiplying by 1, which is something that's totally valid to do. Um, so this gives me the limit as h approaches 0 of. So when you multiply by the conjugate, the nice thing that happens is you get the first thing squared minus the second thing squared, and the middle terms just drop out. So uh, the square of radical x plus h is just x plus h. 
And then there's going to be a minus sign, right? Because it's uh, a plus b times a minus b, so minus. And then the square of the second thing is just x. And then over the denominator, don't forget those parentheses, they're important. Uh, we can simplify that. So we have that. Now I'm going to cancel the h's. And at this point, if I substitute in h equals 0, I don't cause any problems, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I get this, and then that's obviously 1 over 2 root x, and then rewrite my answer. And there you go. So that's the two ways that we're going to use the definition of the derivative. You really have to know that so that you can use it whenever you need it. And I hope this was helpful. Good luck.